We've been using all these heart tools to build projects for over a year now. That's right, last year we completed 49 projects with these tools, and today we're gonna to talk about how they held up. It's time for a make or break. Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah, and today we're gonna to talk about all of the heart tools we've been using in yeah. the last year, how they've held up, and honestly, how we got started with heart tools. Yeah, so way back in November of 2019, Sarah and I were invited out to New York for the reveal of a new product line, a new tool line. And while they didn't tell us who it was gonna be, they just told us it was going to be an exclusive line for Walmart. Mm -hmm. So, expectations. They were low. We're gonna be, I mean, we've been to Walmart, the tool section, and there's just nothing exciting there. Right. So, we didn't know what to think. It was the last trip of the year for us, and we decided to go. And we made a video about it, which we'll <laughs> link to up there. If you haven't seen it, you should really watch it. You can, you can literally watch us as we get more and more excited through the day. <laughs> the tools turned out to be really good. I feel like because our expectations were so low, we didn't think we were gonna get anything out of it, and yeah. we were pleasantly surprised with everything Hart had to offer. Yep, so not only were the tools really, really well built, and we got to try a bunch of them while yes. we were there, and we were very surprised, there was something else that really grabbed our attention, and that was their team told us how excited they were to have a new battery platform in Walmart. Home Depot and Lowe's, all they sell right. are tools and materials. That's what they do. Walmart, what do they sell? Everything else. Everything. <laughs> so to them, they were building this foundation the first year of woodworking and mechanics and outdoor power equipment tools, yep. all powered by the same battery platform. Once they're established and Walmart shoppers have some heart batteries at home, what else in Walmart can you put a battery into? So that's where they seem to be going. Right. That's why we got super, super excited about it. That's when we reached out to them and said, hey, we're gonna start a new show called Make or Break. We'd love to work with you guys. We think your tools will be perfect for entry level DIY. So they sent us everything you see here and we used it for a year. That's right. So we're gonna go over all of the tools that we have here from Heart yep. and how they performed for us for the last year. All right, so where should we start? Uh, let's start with the drills because I feel like everyone, that's Ev the first thing you Everyone buy. buys a drill first, sure. So we have the impact in the drill kit that comes with a couple batteries and yep. our charger. But this isn't the only kit that they have. We chose the brushless version. Yeah, and that's important. So the other option is a brushed motor. The brushless is a newer technology, different, different way of making an electric motor, which is going to make it more efficient so it's going to last longer on the same battery right. and it makes it more powerful. It also makes it a little bit more expensive, but the difference between the kits is like 50 bucks. I would spend the 50 bucks to get the brushless version. Right now, it's actually only a $20 difference. Oh. So if you're gonna go buy them, go buy them right now. So wait, so both, so the two brushless with yes, the battery the and the kit, kit is a 150 now? Yes. You have no excuse. If you're going to buy your first drill set, I think uh, the impact and the drill do a great job, 150 bucks. Comes with two with batteries, batteries and, and a charger. charger, you can't lose. So these two tools have been amazing. Easily, we use them more than anything else here. We have beaten the crap out of these, dropped them we, several. We have not beaten the crap out of them. I wonder if you're gonna say that. So, all right, fair enough. I drop tools. Aggressively. Not, it's not aggressively, but I you do drop You literally dropped drop this 20 minutes ago from like seven feet up. Like who does that? She's not lying. So 20 minutes ago. As I was gathering all the tools to set this up, we had that light, the LED light, which you'd think would be really fragile, hanging from the ceiling. So normally it lights up the logo back there and I grabbed it and fumbled it and threw it across the room. It pounded into it's, the ground. It still works too. Yeah, so. it works great. So I have, I have dropped these tools often. I'll give you an up close shot of some of the stuff, the damage that's been done to the plastic on the outside. They all work flawlessly. All right, what's next? All right, so let's talk about the jigsaw. So this is crazy powerful, and personally, I love when you have it on the oscillating feature. It goes so fast. It is very fast. It's also hot garbage. You should never buy their jigsaw. Oh my gosh, it is not hot garbage. It's hot garbage. He's Don't buy just it. salty Don't buy it. because it's a D handle, and somebody's very particular for barrel grips. Calm down. If you're gonna <laughs> make a jigsaw, it should be a barrel grip jigsaw. If that's you all. want one, that's fine. If not, and you're a normal person, hot this garbage. will work fantastic. All right, all fairness, it's true. It's a D handle, and as far as D handles go, that actually surprised me. It outperformed really? way better. Entry level jigsaws are not that great. I've used plenty of them, and I've used really nice expensive ones, and there's a massive difference. This does an excellent job of bridging the gap. 
It is very fast. It is very, very nimble. There's um, They gave us a bunch of different blades with it, and one of them was a scroll blade, so it's like half the thickness. It was very easy. We're cutting out all types of detailed shapes. I loved it. It just has the wrong handle on it. It should have been designed a barrel grip. I blame Hart. It's garbage. Don't buy it. Okay. Oh, that's not fair. It's a great jigsaw. It really is. All right, let's talk about the circular saw. Okay, so I love this thing. Yeah. We have run this through so many, so many different materials and it's never bogged down on us. Yep. It's crazy powerful. I personally like that it has a left side blade because I'm right-handed, so it's easier for me to see what I'm cutting through. That's true. Um, and I know that's a personal preference, but for me, I love that. Dust collection was really good on this too. When you set it up. Yeah, so we've if been you're bad about way too not often. Using we're in a hurry and yeah. we don't hook up a uh, vac to it. If we know we're gonna do a lot, we went out of our way, we hooked up right. the back, and it's it's really, really good. The dust collection is really good on I was surprised. So there's only one thing about it that I wasn't super excited about. I know what it is. But what? It's the depth control. Isn't <laughs> it, it is the depth control. Yeah, so if you guys have used circular saws before, there are a lot of different ways you can do this. When you wanna adjust the depth on your saw from rotating the saw up from the base plate. And normally, I, I feel like these days, everyone's got a nice single action button. You press the right. button, you adjust it, and you put it back. Instead, we've got this knob, we've gotta tighten and loosen. And the reason why that's a problem is that after you've loosened it, you go to adjust it, you're supporting often, trying to support the saw with one hand like this, and I'm trying to tighten it now, you it's a, moving you around. You need a third hand. Yeah, I, there, there are actually some higher end saws that have these amazing one hand operation for adjust, and they're genius. I just feel like that there is somewhere in between that Hart could have went to make that easier, but we're being really picky. We are. I mean, I mean the, the same mechanism is used for the bevel um, adjustment too, and it, that doesn't seem to give me any problem. I don't problem, know why it doesn't bother me either, but, but it's it doesn't. It's just the depth one, but yeah. besides that, this thing has been amazing. Yeah, we like it quite a bit. Um, speaking of saws, let's talk about the miter saw. Yeah, let's do that. So our miter saw is actually bolted it's back there. Back, <laughs> back there behind me on our bench, so we'll get you some shots of that. That's been fine. Right. Like, it's not that it isn't great at what it does. It just does a simple thing. It, the angles were fine. We were able to fine tune that and get nice 45 degree bevels and 45 degree angles and, and it worked great. Um, it's just, it's a chop saw. It's not a glide saw, which is what I really wished it was because if it was a sliding compound miter saw, it would just have way more depth of cut. Often we caught ourselves cutting like one by right. eights or more and you just, you can't do that on there because it can only do up to a one by six. But that's, that's not a fault of this. I mean, it's just a different tool. So Hart doesn't have a sliding compound monitor saw yet. <laughs> I would very much like to have one, but the reality is for a chop saw that's going to do up to a one by six, it did great, never had a problem. It's very accurate when you spend the time to get it right. right. It works very well. I liked it a lot. I really like the, the fact that it doesn't have a laser the laser line yes. isn't there and it's actually the shadow cast or it's the LED light casting a shadow from the yep. blade. Yep. Like you don't need to question where your line is because it's literally where the blade is. There are, the blade's casting the shadow. Yeah, there are $1,500 miter saw that still have lasers on them. And I do not understand yeah. that. Whoever, whatever genius figured out, they just put an LED light so you can see the shadow of the blade. You know exactly where it's gonna cut, how wide the curve is gonna be. Yep. It's, it's a perfect system. I don't know why anyone would not use that version, but. Either way, they got that right. So we love the miter saw, it does a great job. I would just really like to see a big brother. Okay, be patient. Yeah, Come patience down. is definitely one of my virtues. All right, let's move on and let's okay. talk about the sander. And actually, we have a pretty interesting story about this guy. We do, and it starts with us not liking the sander. Yeah, we didn't like it. Like at all. And it's funny because it was the one tool out of all of these that was just underperforming Right. Drive to the point where it was driving us crazy. I hated um, using it. It wasn't, yeah, no, it really was bad. And to my own fault, I didn't reach out to Hart. Like anyone else who buys these tools, if they don't like how it works, what are they gonna do? They're gonna reach out to Hart and ask them about it. Right. And I just never got around to it. This is the reason why. We've used a lot of very high and expensive sanders mm -hmm. and other types of tools. So we have a lot of experience over the years. I've used $500 random orbital sanders, and they are amazing. They glide and just leave magic behind them. If you can afford them, get one. However, so when I got this guy, I it's been a long time since I've used a random orbital sander from an entry-level company like Ryobi or Cobalt or Craftsman, something like that. 
and I haven't used one in a while. When I got this, the, the random orbital action, okay, means that it's going to be vibrating in little tiny circles, but this whole thing's going to spin as well. And if you, you know that you're using a random orbital sander correctly, when you put it down on your material and you can watch on the side that this whole thing is spinning. And the sander that we got didn't. Yeah. It would struggle. If you held it up in the air, it would spin like crazy. The second you put it on any surface, it didn't work. And so it just wasn't performing well. And I'm just like, well, maybe it's an entry level sander. It's very inexpensive. That's what you get. And I shouldn't have bought that. The only clue was a few months ago, it started making some crazy noises. Like and scary, don't touch it, yeah, crazy like noises. Things, pieces inside were just ready to leave. And that's when I reached out to Hart. And I just said, you know, this thing's acting weird. It's way past a return policy kind of thing. So I didn't know what to think. But when I started describing my problem to them, they're going, that's not, that's normal. not normal. Right. And they said, we'll help you out. We're going to send you another one. They sent me another one. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It I works feel, I feel beautifully. Bad. I feel bad for being mean and mad at him. Uh, maybe, like, right? I feel like I needed to apologize to the other sander because it wasn't his fault. He just, <laughs> he had special it, needs. He had, he had problems and we just, we didn't know better. No tool line is going to be perfect. It just, they're making too many of these things. And the reality is I didn't recognize that there was a problem with the sander that we had. Once we figured that out though, we got the new one. Oh my, dude, this performs fantastic. Um, it, you can watch it, it rotates really, really well. The, the surface is leaving behind it is way, way better. It's a fantastic sander and a joy to use. Um, so yeah, I'm glad we got that fixed and straightened that out because up until now I was really disappointed with it, but it's, it's great. So that's a good lesson for you guys. Keep in mind that if you have any issues at all whatsoever, do not hesitate to reach out to them. Yeah. Um, we reached out through their social media team and they got us in connection with the right people to help us out. So if you have any problems, don't hesitate to ask. Yep. All right, let's move on to some of our more obscure tools that we okay. use more often. <laughs> this thing? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the batteries. When they first gave us a kit with batteries in it, it came with this charger. We don't like that charger. We don't like this charger. It's, I mean, it snaps it on, works. it's tiny and it's... It tells you that it's charging and stuff, but... It's fine. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I like a charger. I like to know, I mean, I, I, this actually has vents on it, so it may have an active fan. I've never actually heard one in there. Yeah, I don't think so. It does fine, but... We, we might be a little keeping, bit snobby with our chargers. These, well, no, because we use, if you're going to invest in the tools and build a lot of projects like we do, you're not going to use one battery. You're going to use a crap ton of batteries and you're going to want to charge them and to have an outlet with six of these plugged in and these little things and cables going over. It just sucked. So I did not like that. Just recently they came out with their four battery charger. Love this thing. We actually have two of them at first. So they sent us two. And at first I'm like, well, I don't need to. Oh my God. Every, yes, we do. <laughs> every time we finish a project and we've wrapped shooting and we're ready to leave for the evening, We'll clean up, we grab all the batteries that we have, we plug them all in, and whenever we come back to the shop, everything's there where you can you're, find it. You're just ready to go. And they're all full. Now this is not a simultaneous charger, it is sequential. And what that means is it's automatically going to choose one of these batteries and fill it first, then go to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Um, but even we found that in the middle of projects, when we grab batteries, you just get into the habit of just plugging them into the charger whenever you're done using them or whenever they think you think they're getting low. And it's just, they're always charged. It's fantastic. Love this thing to death. It's got mounting things in the back, so we're gonna mount it to our wall. It sits nicely either on its back um, or on its top like you see here. Lo I did not know that I cared that much about a battery charger, but this like changed my world. So I love it. It's great. All right, what else have we got? All right, so I say we talk about the Vax because I am a person who likes everything organized and clean and pretty and no sawdust everywhere, which doesn't happen in a shop. Um, but it helps if you have a really good vacuum. And does. we do because we have the heart one that I am absolutely obsessed with. A, he looks like R2-D2. He does. B, um, there's just features on it that aren't on a bunch of other shop backs that I personally value, like the handle, or you can manage the hose, which is a huge thing, so you're not tripping over it. But I feel like having a really good vac in your shop is a necessity. Yeah, and this thing's six horsepower. They're really not that expensive. They've got several different models you can go check out um, over at walmart.com. But 
they sent us a couple of the vacs and you know her r2d2 vac <laughs> is clearly our favorite um i was worried a little bit with it because it's got like the steel look canister mm -hmm. kind of thing that it would just get dented up like crazy we have dragged that poor thing We've in between our work benches a hundred times banged it into things it still looks new one problem it <laughs> turns out what do you have to you, you have this is important it is people they don't tell you this oh it's, actually we didn't read the manual maybe they do sense. tell us maybe it's common sense you have to empty it if you don't it really cakes a lot of sawdust in it and <laughs> you have to like scrape it out with your hands and it's really gross <laughs> to, to their credit that's the point is that it never felt really like it was losing suction it that's just true. kept going so we just didn't think to empty it out right and we were noticing eventually that the suction wasn't that great. We like opened it up and it was just this train wreck. It was packed yeah. to the top, absolutely compacted. It was, it was rough. And we've done that twice now. So it's not like we yeah. learned all that. No, stuff. we oh, did we should probably empty it after every product. No, we just let it go until R2-D2 beeps at us. And then yeah. we finally But as soon as, as soon as you clean it out, it went right back to the crazy suction oh. that it had. And it was amazing. It really, really is awesome. It's, it's a fantastic bag. All right, how about you talk about the rotary tool because I haven't had a chance to use it yet. Yeah, this is fantastic for a couple of reasons. One, it's the first one I've ever had that's battery powered, which I didn't know I needed that. Normally you find a place to mount one of these things on a workbench, it's plugged in, that's where you do your carving or yep. your fine tuned sand, a little fine sanding, that you kind of fun stuff. You have it in a specific spot. This, I was taking, bring over to our workbench where I had lots of light, pulled up a stool and sat there and used it for carving in one of our projects. It worked really, really well. We have a couple other projects coming up where we're gonna be doing some more exciting things with this guy. But either way, super, super fast, super easy to use. It's got a built-in box on the back that holds all of their accessories, along with a whole bunch of slots in the front to hold the accessories used the most often. It's been an absolute joy to use. Love it, love it. Did not know I needed a battery operated one, and now I will only have a battery operated <laughs> one forever. But yeah, I like it quite a bit. All right, what else have we got? You've been using the inflator a lot too, haven't you? So here's the thing about the inflator. They didn't send us that inflator. <laughs> Originally, we told them they were willing to send us anything we wanted to mm -hmm. use in the shop for our projects. I told them not to send the mechanic stuff just because we're not going to be working on cars. I was in Walmart looking at the heart display and I saw that air compressor and I remembered us using it in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. It was really, really fast. It's very small, easy to carry. I bought it myself. It's one of my favorite hard tools. So every time we go mountain biking with my kids, we always grab That's that. That's awesome. We top off all the tires before we hit the, tr the, hit the trails. And, and of course it's got a digital display so we can make sure that we have the right PSI. Um, I recently had a problem with a tire with my truck and it was the weekend. I was not gonna be able to get in to have them look at the tire and it kept going down. I still had to go places. I literally grabbed that, threw in the back seat. Whenever it would get too low, I'd just pop out, stand next to it and fill it back up. It works very, very well. It's super handy. I use it a ton. I love that thing. So that's not related to woodworking or DIY stuff so much but as- But you should get one. <laughs> well, I think that that actually speaks to what Hart's bigger mission is. If you've got a battery platform, which we do, we've got Hart batteries everywhere. I need to do something unusual. I need to go fill up the tires on my car. I can grab the exact same batteries. And I got, that thing was like 30 bucks bare tool. So it wasn't that expensive. And I can easily go in there and just hold down the trigger until it says, you know, 35 pounds and I'm good. I'm on my way. So yeah, I like it a lot. We got a couple unusual tools like that. So like the LED light, mm -hmm. that guy is insanely bright. It's got like a wrap or a two by four hook on the back yeah, to clip does. onto a two by four. We use it all the time. We need more light somewhere, especially around the house when we're working on projects. We, like I said, we hang it up on the ceiling uh, to light up our logo whenever we shoot our show. And it does a great job of that. The radio, they got a Bluetooth radio. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of the radio? Because we used it like three times. It was neat to be able to take music out on the property. I personally would have liked it if it was louder. Yeah, me too. But that's just be in our instance where we're using it, we're also using power tools. So not having a radio that's super loud, and I know there's a safety feature in that, like you probably shouldn't have really loud music playing. <laughs> I personally would rather have country music blaring in the background while I'm using my power tools. But. Yeah, the reality is it was, it, technically, it worked really well. It was very, very easy to sync up, uh, to, to connect through Bluetooth with any of our devices. Right. We did several devices. It worked great. 
honestly, and I don't think it's that expensive either. Um, but be, like I said, being able to grab one of the batteries that you have in your household and head out on the deck and have something louder than just your phone to be able to play some music in the background, it'd probably be great. great. All right, what about the multi-tool? We really haven't used this, have we? So as useful as a multi-tool is, I thought we'd use it a lot more often. I, I think it's just the type of projects we picked. We just didn't really need it much. Last week, mm -hmm. we remodeled a nook up in my bedroom, turned into a little entertainment piece, and I had to cut out, what was it? It was the... Um, There's like the window sill. Yeah, the window, yeah, the window weird... sill was sticking out. Yeah. And it needed to be hacked off. And immediately I'm like, oh, these multi-tool would be perfect. And sure enough, grabbed it, put a wood, a, a half circle, you know, wood cutting blade on it and it worked brilliantly. I just slid it right into it, dragged it across the front, and it was gone. So yeah, these things are super, super handy. Um, if, you're, if you're doing any drywall work and you're gonna be cutting into the drywall to put in an outlet, these things are amazing. So I don't have a lot of experience with a hard one. Just this last project, it worked great, and I'm glad. Um, it is a little big. Um, for whatever reason, the other ones I've used, I don't feel like they're as long as that thing is. I, I don't know if, may, if maybe the body could be a little bit smaller. But I mean, I didn't notice it while I was working. So yeah, it, it did a pretty good job. We've also got Vax, um, besides the big shot Vax we talked about. That guy has been indispensable. We use him a lot, don't we? We've stepped up a lot of things, like weird, random things as well, like bugs. Spiders. So many spiders. Sarah so hates spiders. <laughs> I hate them. Uh, no, but this has been nice because I feel like we've used this a lot on just the workbench by the miter saw. Yep. So it just, it creates a ton of dust and instead of dragging the shot back over every single time we needed it, it was yeah. nice to grab the little one when our mess wasn't huge. So yeah, we have used that one a lot and they have um, a different version of this one too, don't they? It's pretty much the same back, but it's got a different nozzle. It's, it's designed for work, for being in your car. So it's for cleaning up carpet, that kind of stuff. But I love how easy that was. That whole front end just pops right off really, really quickly. Super easy to empty. So when you're in a shop, um, I meant the actual, oh, yeah. Yep, there you go. You pop that right off, walk over to the trash can, dump it all out, snaps back on. It, it's really pretty clever. It's very, very light. And again, right. uses the you batteries that you already use. Yeah. Well, and then right next to it, we've got the shop blower too. Quick. Which up till now, I've had, I've had just for like blowing sawdust off of stuff, cleaning off workbenches, that kind of stuff. I have like huge leaf blowers. <laughs> that I would use constantly. So when we saw that, I got really excited because it's so much smaller. I just didn't think it'd be that powerful though. It's very strong. Like the couple it times is. I used it, I wasn't expecting it to make the mess that I made with it. Cause I just figured I'm just gonna brush off like this little area. No, it was like, I cleaned the whole shop with it. Like, yeah, you, got, you do have to be careful. It will kick up a ton of dust if you're not careful. But it's got multiple speeds on it. Is it a variable speed trigger? I think it is. I think so. Yeah, but it, I just, like I haven't had a problem just, you know, I think I just probably just spritz with it <laughs> and just like hit little bits and not, not make a huge mess. But it just, it is a great job of cleaning off the, work, the workbench when you want it clean. So I like that too. So what else have we not talked about? There's a couple accessories. So we've used this a lot. That, yes, we have. For whatever reason, Hart has like three or four different stud finders. And they're all like drastically different. That was one of the things we noticed at their show. There were just some accessories where it's like, I like tape measures. We haven't talked about those yet. We have two of their metallic, or is, that's a magnet tape measure. Yeah, those are magnets. Yeah. So we have two of their tape measures. We're really big fans of those. Sarah will talk about that in a second. Um, but they have like nine different tape measures. And I just, I don't understand. So anyways, this is their, um, their stud finder that we chose because of how it featured or how it works. All these lights are across the top. I didn't, I didn't know that stud finders came like that. And when we got this one, I immediately threw my stud finder that I had out at home because I love that it literally lit up the entire stud and we weren't guessing exactly where center was. It just, it takes the guesswork out of it. It really does. So being able to not just find the stud, but find the center of the stud right. is really, really cool. It also has this feature where it finds electrical wires too. And yells at you. <laughs> yeah, and these little lightning bolts light up, which just means you're gonna die. Like don't, so, don't, don't hit that. Yeah, wall. don't cut into that Avoid. part of the wall. So anyways, that works great. So, so tell yeah. about those. So the tape measures. Yeah. I, so like we have a couple different ones. He's got the longer, the, we have the 30 and the 25. I, I need my little weird numbers that they have on here because I don't. Your fractions. I, yeah, my little weird numbers. That's what I said. I don't want to have to sit there because my brain like will have to like go through and count what fraction I'm going to. And I'm oddly obsessed with the fact that Hart just 
took that guesswork out for me. Yeah. And when I need to find exactly uh, an eighth or whatever, it's just it's right there and you don't have to think about it, which might be a dumb thing, but oh. I absolutely love that that's there on the tape measure. I like the break. So this is, this is something that just really makes me happy because I'm always snapping myself with these things. <laughs> so are. on the bottom, yeah, you know I am. <laughs> so on the bottom, it's got this blue button, which is just a break. So you press on it, it's gonna slow it down. So as if you've got it way out there, good standout on this thing. Oh, Look stop, stop, stop. Well, I think that's awesome. All right, so anyways, <laughs> as it's coming back, you can kind of just tap that break and make it come in. You get to smooth. save the fingies. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, those, they, they've been rock stars. These are another tool that I have personally thrown across the room I, I have launched one of those before. Many, many times. Honestly, all of these tools, we've been very, very rough on them. I do, I'm not kidding, and she's not kidding. I drop a lot of tools every single time I was completely convinced they were gonna break, right. um, and they didn't. I, I can't think of any of these tools that, that we've utilized that we've actually broken. Again, we had the one problem with the sander, which turns out it was right. just, it was, a, it was a bad sander. It needed to be addressed, but there are, there are systems in place to fix that. So I should have known to go to right. Facebook or Instagram and reach out and just say, hey, I don't think the sander's that good. And they could have said, well, that doesn't make sense because it's awesome. So anyways, we'll do that next time. Uh, we can't forget about our gloves. Oh, that's true. Oh, and our jackets. Oh, yeah, we're wearing them. Yeah, the, so, well, and us, also all the PPE stuff we have. Right. We have, um, we actually have some really nice knee pads that we've never used on camera yet, but they are super comfy. They are, they're great if you're going to be doing tile and that kind of stuff, but we've got some flooring projects mm -hmm. coming up, so we'll definitely try those out then. These gloves, though, I have murdered my <laughs> gloves. I'm not going to lie, they are not in super great shape. They are yeah, on their holes. <laughs> they're on their way. They're tiny holes, but they're it's they're on their way out. But the reality is, I didn't just use these. Which I wear gloves almost all the time. We're in the shop. I mm -hmm. just prefer to wear gloves because I have delicate man baby hands. <laughs> and but I also, when we move out to this property, we have lots of outdoor stuff. And just right. recently, I got some outdoor gloves, which is actually those models there. Right. Hart sent us those, and they are great. But before I got those, I used these for moving lumber and wood and uh, picking up and firewood, clearing, stuff, yeah. clearing out the forest. <laughs> it's been, it's it's crazy. I just, I was super, super rough with these things. Well, and those aren't the and ones that have fun. the super reinforced fingers either. Well, the no, ones that I have have the rubber um, reinforcements and those have held up a lot better. Except that those also, the rubber reinforcements is on have, the top, it's to protect you from things landing on your hand. It's from, for demolition. But I. Th uh, do you think that they're actually more padded? Uh, yes. Because I'll like take a look at along those. the fingers too, like it's just they're much. These heavier. are these are their basic performance gloves kind of thing that are just everyday stuff. I, and again, I, I wore them today while we were getting everything set up, while we were moving some, we're trying to build a new lumber rack and that kind of stuff. And I'm wearing them today, and they're they're fine. I have I have zero complaints. Clearly though, <laughs> they the, come up. The little tiny holes are going to get bigger, and when they get bigger, I'll need another set. But they. Uh, they've held up for a year of significant abuse. And I've now been using my outdoor ones like yours with this leather palm for quite a while now, and they look new. So well, they're, I, hand, they're handling it way better. I personally like the leather ones more than not only these ones, but the reinforced ones. I feel like I have more control over what I'm doing with these. Yeah. And if I'm not worried about smashing my fingers in something, yeah. which most of the projects that we're doing aren't crazy dangerous, yeah. I really like uh, the flexibility I have with the outdoor ones more. Well, and they also have nose wipes. <laughs> this makes me so happy. <laughs> you have, that's mine, so that's my nose snot on it. That's a nice <laughs> thought. You should've just told me that after I was done here. So you're, the whole back, why am I touching it? <laughs> that's why I told you. The whole back of your thumb. Uh, has this really nice, is that terry cloth? I don't know what that is, but a very nice it's soft very fabric. Soft. <laughs> it's designed to absorb sweat. You can use it to wipe your brow while your gloves are dirty. That's typically that area you're not using in your hands. So you can wipe your brow. And maybe some people use it to wipe their nose in the winter. I don't know. I Either way, <laughs> they're awesome. Love them. Speaking of being out in the winter. What about your coat? Yeah, so we just got these. We've only had these for a few weeks. We've been wearing them in the shop. Our, our shop is very, very cold. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been super nice. They're heated jackets. They came with 1.5 amp hour batteries, the Correct. smallest battery we've seen from Hart yet. Right. And what do you think? So we're not new to heated gear. Nope. We have several heated jackets from different companies. Yeah. And 
We're spoiled. We are spoiled. Yeah. I am, again, pleasantly surprised with them. I like how lightweight these are because I feel yeah. like a couple of the other ones we have just you put on a heated jacket and it literally weighs you down and these don't do that. They're no. lightweight, they're easy to move around in. I don't feel like I'm restrained when we're working in the shop and they keep you warm. I'm surprised that I like how warm they get, but again, we're working in a cold shop. I it's nice to not get overheated but stay warm. I'm just at the realizing same time. yours has been turned on literally high. the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, uh, again, wearing them down in the shop, we're also abusing these jackets. So our other heated jackets, I, we're not tradespeople. We don't work out on the job site and destroy those jackets. So they held up great um, just because we're just wearing them to go shopping. Mm -hmm. you no, know, these guys we have really worn, which right. I tend to, I now grab this one because again, when you've got the batteries handy, that's what you grab. Yep. So I grabbed this jacket to go outside to work on the property. Um, and we've been very, very rough on these. And so far they've held up fantastic, but it's only been a few months. Right. Um, so any of these bat, any of these kind of jackets though, the batteries just, I don't like. They're always in a weird, uncomfortable spot. They're on the back, the back side. Uh, they're in, like, on, theory, like resting on your hip in yeah, a weird spot. In theory spot. you're supposed to be able to sit down and it pushes it to the side. Mm -hmm. I've found that I sit down and it, digs into my side yeah. um and you, you just have to adjust you do a little sitting in your car <laughs> shimmy and, and it's fine and, and so i i've i've learned to live with it on all but it's no different than any other brand these i think are 150 bucks okay. um and they don't have a woman's jacket yet they're all men's jackets which is fine with me i like i have a men's jacket and i like it i again i'm not restricted by a woman's cut so i like that of this one yeah so they're pretty great well, it's been a year. What do you think? I love them. I will continue using them. Um, I have no complaints. They've been a real pleasure. You know, I remember when we first started reporting on these, if you go back to that original video that we made about the event where we saw these for the first time, everybody, a lot of people complained saying, why on earth would you make them white? Because they're immediately gonna look dirty, which first of all, <laughs> what tool person? <laughs> It's like, oh, my tool's dirty. I don't understand that at all. These have actually held up really well. Yeah, they have. They're, ours are filthy. They have been you know, in our shop for a year now. They've got glue and junk all over them. And they actually still look nice. I feel like they look nice. They're good looking tools. It's just the fact that we don't think about the tools. That I think is the biggest thing. When we go to do a project, we're thinking about our material, we're thinking about how we're going to do it, our technique, we're thinking about our plan. Never once have I thought, will the tool be able to handle it? They've just worked beautifully. Yeah, I, I, I really, really like these tools. Um, and again, just to clarify what I said in the beginning, we're sponsored by heart. They sponsor our show, it means a ton to us. They send us yep. all these tools so we can get projects done and build great things. They make this possible. And yeah, I'm grateful. And so, but you're gonna have to trust me. I'm not saying this for them, I'm saying it for you. If you want a great set of tools that's gonna to be affordable, that's going to be expandable, and man, I'm telling you, if they can come out with something this year that starts taking those batteries into other sections of Walmart, I'm just gonna get giddy. I want a bicycle <laughs> where I can grab one of the four amp hour batteries. A battery powered bicycle? Yeah, I just power assisted. Okay. I don't need it to be a motorcycle, I just need it to be power assisted to be able to scoot around and go pick up groceries or something, if I lived anywhere near a grocery store. <laughs> um, I think that would be a fantastic idea. Um, I, I would love, it sounds silly and stupid, but I mean, I, there's all types of things in the kitchen I'd like to be able to take outside mm -hmm. on a picnic. Um, there's just a lot of neat things. There's, there are powered things we use around our house that I think would be made even better powered by these batteries. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. But otherwise, as far as DIY, They've done the job, they continue to do the job. Oh my gosh, we forgot one tool. It's all right. What did we forget? We forgot the angle grinder. So Hart has this angle grinder. It's on our wall behind us. I forgot too. Yup, <laughs> it's on the wall. The reason why we forgot it is because we've never turned it on. Correct. So it looks great. We played with it's it really at the pretty. event. <laughs> it looks fantastic. I feel like we just haven't found the right project for it yet. We want to do some metal working right. coming up this year, so you never know. We'll let you know what this, we think. Is of this going to be the year that we get to use the, the angle gonna, grinder? We get to use the angle grinder. If anything, we're just going to cut just through something. Done. Yeah, I, I need a new pole in the house. 
I bet I'm you on can it. Win. I'll get it for you. Don't Thanks, worry. Sam. All right, guys, that wraps up our wrap up. If you have any other questions about any of these tools, leave them in the comments below. We will be happy to answer them. I also want to thank Hart one more time for sponsoring this episode and reminding us that we can build anything we can imagine if we do it with Hart. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. All right, break's over. Let's make something. <laughs>